Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Maze of Troll Tips and Tricks. If this is your first time here, my name is Phil and I teach people how to set up and run a Mazak CNC lathe while programming it with Maze of Troll. In this next video, I'm going to show you guys how to turn using a flat bottom grooving tool. Alright, let's get started. Alright, here's our turning tool, or grooving tool rather. We're going to use a groove tool with a 125 width and it has a 7,000th radius. This machine will do a turning process with a full radius grooving tool without any problem. But when we're using a flat bottom grooving tool like this, we have to adjust the trailing edge of the geometry to compensate for the flat on the tool. So this is the grooving tool. The machine is going to think it's only 14 thousandths wide and it's going to look like this. It's going to ignore this 111 thousandths width on the grooving tool. So this is the width of the flat in the middle of the grooving tool. So from this radius to this radius is 111 thousandths. And what we have to do is adjust the trailing edge of the geometry inward 111 thousandths so it doesn't wipe out the the part. And I'll show you this in a simulation with and without adjusting it. That way you can see what's actually going on. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new program. So go to left button, go to program, program file, and we're going to create a work number that's not listed up here. I'm going to use work number 20. If it's a new program, push the program button, and we're going to go with Mazatrol. Workpiece material, I got a piece of aluminum bar stock, so we'll use aluminum. Max outside diameter, the bar stock is 1.75. It does not have a hole in it. And we're going to say it's 3 inches long. The max spindle limit, we're going to say 2,000 RPM. Finish allowance on X is going to be 10 thousandths. Finish allowance on Z is 5 thousandths. And stock removal of work face, we're going to leave it zero because we're going to face off the stock with the tool set zero and then run the program. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the coolant. Arrow M coolant on. So now what we're going to do is uh, turn a small shallow step in this part. So we're going to say it's bar stock on the outside. Cutting point on X is 1.750. And we're going to lower the feet a little bit. And the tool we're going to be using is going to be the grooving tool, which is this tool right here, tool 5, which has a 7 thousandths radius, and it's 125 thousandths wide, but because we're turning with this tool, the machine's not going to acknowledge this width. So that's why we have to adjust the geometry. So tool 5, so what we're going to do is do a linear, and we're going to turn back uh, 100 thousandths, and here's where I'm going to show you where we have to push this Z number back further to compensate for the flat of the grooving tool. So the, I'm going to adjust this number later on, but we're going to go with 100 thousandths. Final corner is 20 thousandths. Linear. Alright, so here's the geometry that I want 
but this is not what I'm going to be running. So I'm going to basically be doing a shallow turn diameter and right now I'm going to run a simulation on it auto We're going to turn the speed down a little so we can actually see it wiping out the part. So here's it come for the finish pass. So this is the width of the tool at 125. It's going to chamfer the front of it. Come across. And now here it's wiping out the geometry. So it'll actually not put that on there, it'll, it'll cut it off. So that's what we have to adjust in our program. So what we need to do is for this 100 thousandths here, we need to add 111 to that number. So we're going to go 0.211 to that number. We're going to redraw it, and now it's going to push the geometry back, and I kept the store button lit so we can see the previous geometry. So now we're going to run the simulation again. All right, so here's the simulation. Here's the 125 width of the tool. And now it's going to correct, correctly cut the back side of the workpiece. All right, here's the finish pass. So it's going to do the front chamfer. And the front of the tool is going to be coming across this geometry, but the back of the tool is going to be coming down the correct side now that I've adjusted the width. And that's what I wanted to show you. And we can also see it in a check, but because it doesn't show the width of the groove tool in the check, it's not as obvious until we do a simulation. Uh, the other thing to note, the depth of this tool cannot be too deep. If the tool is too long, the machine will just ignore the grooving tool. So if I change this to like 0.5 depth and then run the check, it should just ignore this. Well, it ran it.
but it didn't run the front chamfer though. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm gonna change it back. to 300 thousandths and now it's cutting the chamfer correctly all right now we're done programming it now we need to set the work shift and then run our part all right, let's set the work shift. Crank the spindle speed up. Now we're at the face of the part. Program file. Z offset teach zero input. And then I'm gonna put in the chuck barrier. So minus 1.2 and then jaw number one. And now we'll go to the trace screen. Auto work number 20. Scale All right, here's our jaws and there's our shape that we're going to be running And let's cycle start. Auto, cooling on. And our part's done. And there's our shaft with a hundred thousand step on the front of it with a one inch 650 diameter. If you guys like what you see, go ahead and push that subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any future videos we have coming out. Also, if you guys found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That helps out my channel and gets YouTube to share this video with more people. Also, if you guys have suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching.